This is my church. You know, I run out here in this beautiful nature created by some higher power. It is absolutely gorgeous. I feel so connected to life, the environment, nature, myself, everything, all beings and so forth, love, the whole thing. And realizing there is no, whether I get first, fifth, 25th, nobody can take away the experience I'm having right now in nature, mm -hmm. feeling this fit, feeling this alive. And that's what I tell a lot of my athletes to this day, don't let anybody rob you of your joy and journey in nature, training and doing this every day. That's self-care, that's very protected time every day. You deserve that. Not only will others benefit from it, but also that's your precious, precious time. And don't let anything rob you of that opportunity every day to go inside yourself and exhale. Yeah, that's the experience that I want everybody to have. Exactly. You know, it's 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 a sense of feeling connected to yourself, of feeling alive, of being connected to nature and your environment in in a way that I I don't know any other way to achieve that other than to be actively engaged with my body in that yeah. way. I mean, Meditation, um, a variety of other ways to alter your mind, whether it's you know um, ayahuasca or um, um, immersion tanks. Um, there's so many ways these days, but one of the ways for me is training mm -hmm. out in nature, immersing myself truly in nature, or just daily. You know, not always am I running in the woods, and it's this idyllic scene. Trust me, I'm on a uh -huh. treadmill every now and then too, but at least closing my eyes and resetting myself and saying, listening to my body, hearing that heart rate and that heavy breathing and just going, okay, there we go. I'm back to the true setting, my evolutionary self. Yeah. Even just for 30 seconds a day, because it takes a while to reset that every day, right? To, to finally have the mind clear and get to a point where it's like, all right, there we go. And everybody, I know everybody has experienced some sort of reset before and where they, whether you take a long shower and you come out invigorated or it's exercise or it's meditation or it's just a great night's sleep or sitting somewhere on a rock overlooking something or the beach. There's so many ways every day that we have an opportunity to sort of take a deep breath, reset and find ourselves mm -hmm. and say, all right, well, I got this. That. Like you said, we can connect that to as many people as possible. That's that's it. Mm -hmm. So with this evolution that you've been on, how has that impacted your your like downstream, how you interact with and coach your athletes? Like what has changed in how you create programs and communicate with your athletes versus perhaps what you might've done five or 10 years ago? Well, five or 10 years ago was more outcome-based. I can help you achieve X qualifier or this time or this result. And now it's more about the process, the journey. I want to get you out there doing it. I want to help you um, achieve not only what you're curious about, but also help you navigate through it all so that you can stay in some sort of balance, right? We have family, we have work, we have our own self-care. If we can take those three and somewhat keep those, all those balls juggled in the air at the same time, then we're really getting to that version of ourselves that mm -hmm. we're really happy with. Maybe not the best version of ourselves, but a pretty good um, outcome of that. And there's gonna be times where, of course, work and professional life takes a bigger balance, bigger part, share of the balance, right? It doesn't mean we stop training. It doesn't mean we stop exercising. It just means we have less hours available or we pick and choose our windows when we train a lot more strategically. Or there's times where family and career take on a bigger um, yeah. role. And so, you know, navigating through that, that's what I work, I want to work with my athletes most on, right? And they're open to that growth and they're open to that, um, exploration in the meantime, a lot of my newer athletes who are who say, you know what, I wanna figure this out and I wanna work with you in order to figure this mm -hmm. out. Do you ever come across like a clone of a younger version of you who's like, 
I don't, I don't want to hear about that. I'm just, I'm here to qualify for Kona. Just give me the plan. <laughs> I, I, I do, yeah, I know. do come across those. Uh-huh. But the beauty is there, they actually sort of get it too. They might not like fully embrace it, but they get that this is about balancing and longevity. Mm-hmm. If great, you make it to Kona this year, but if you do this wrong, I can already tell them, you know, I've been where you've been in your late twenties, early thirties, Kona is everything. And you're gonna be done in two years because you can't keep burning that match the way you are, right? Right. Whereas if you care about doing this for many years and really wanna to get to the top of Kona, which you're not gonna do in your first year or your second year, we have to do this in balance early on. And mm. then you've got a couple of years to really hit your potential there. And that they do get. And I would have even in back in my day <laughs> understood that somewhat mm-hmm. if somebody told me that. In, in working with the group of athletes that you've worked with, what is the consistent challenge that kind of comes up across the board or complaint or, or, or barrier that people are confronted with that you have to help them through? <laughs> this is an easy one. Um, the hardest part of being a coach is communication. The athlete's willingness to communicate with me of all things. Uh-huh. Um, because the more I'm armed with their communication, the better of a plan we can write together, right? Because it is we write it together. You give me your limiters, you give me your challenges, your schedules, your stresses, and I can work a plan around that. And then you say, well, this doesn't work on, I have a soccer game on Saturday and my daughter does this on Sunday. I'm like, all right, well, let's get up at 5 a.m., get those two hours done there. And then in the afternoon, stress is off your table. Uh, you're, you're unstressed about joining the soccer game or going to the gymnastics meet or doing this because we got it done. But you're gonna have to go to bed you know, before 1 a.m. Right. on Saturday. So there's a give and take. So managing that, um, and then the other aspect of communication of how they're feeling, what they're observing, like being vulnerable to this guy yeah. <laughs> on the other end, <clears throat> right? And we know it from being coached all our lives, right? We were coached as young kids. A lot of people have been coached before. And it's one of my questions when I ask athletes, have you been coached before? Because knowing how to be coached, to open yourself up, to allow yourself to be coached, is very, very different than just receiving a plan, mm-hmm. right? We had the luck and the, the joy actually of coaches who were on deck and can see us every day. Our mood, our impatience, our crankiness, our fatigue, right? Our body weight, all that. When it's th- all those things are indicators, mm, this guy might be going a bit over the edge or oh, he might need a recovery week or, well, they didn't have recovery weeks. Yeah, when there we was spent. no such thing as that. <laughs> but, um, but you learn to communicate feel. Exactly. And you, you're so in touch with your body that you have you develop this language yep. for expressing where you're at. And I think that's new and different for people that are coming into it later in exactly. life. As and you see that in the logs, right? Like the I way see. that people communicate with exactly. you and they're like, yeah. well, I hit the, these power numbers, but I missed this. It's like, yeah, I, I already see that from the data. I yeah. wanna know like, you know. How it felt, yeah. what did you do versus, uh, how did it feel versus last week? This is, your heart rates are a little off. What's going on here? Are there other stresses in your life? Did you have dinner last night? You should have been able to crush these intervals. Why did you feel like that, right? Oh yeah, I skipped dinner, I was where I worked late and came home, family time. And next thing I know, I had maybe only a bar, right? Mm-hmm. Well, of course, now we're getting into, now it all makes sense. Now I can actually coach that athlete and let them know, Don't be so hard on yourself on how that workout went. Look, it's very clear here on why it didn't work that way, right? And then their confidence is boosted, of course, because now it all makes sense. If they didn't tell me that, in four weeks from now, they're completely completely upset about their training, Mm -hmm. right? Because they don't understand why it's going so bad, but we haven't broken into everything that they can fix very easily to be successful with this. 